one, the morning betrayal. I want you to picture this scenario. It is Sunday morning. You wake up feeling fantastic. You slept eight hours, your legs feel fresh. You are excited about your long run. You reach over to your nightstand, you put on your Garmin or your Apple Watch, and you look at the screen. Training status, unproductive. Recovery time, 48 hours. HRV, status, unbalanced. <laughs> In one second, your mood crashes. You feel weak. You question yourself. Maybe I shouldn't run hard today. The watch says I am tired. So you skip the run or you run with fear. You just let an algorithm steal your fitness. We are living in the golden age of data. We track sleep, HRV, SPO2, cadence. But we have a problem. We have too much data and zero context. Your watch is an incredible sensor, but it is a terrible coach. It sees what is happening, but it has no idea why it is happening. Today, I am going to explain the science of HRV. I will reveal the ghost runner glitch that ruins your stats. And I will give you the god metric hidden in your sleep data that matters more than your sleep score. 2. The science. What is HRV and why should you care? To understand why the watch lies, you have to understand the metric it uses to judge you. It is called heart rate variability, HRV. Most people think a steady heartbeat is good, like a metronome. Tick. 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 Wrong. A heart that beats like a metronome is a stressed heart. It means your nervous system is rigid. It is in fight or flight mode. A healthy, recovered heart is like a jazz drummer. It is variable. The gap between beat 1 and beat 2 might be 0.9 seconds. The next gap is 1.1 seconds. This high variance means your parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest, is in control. You are relaxed. You are adaptable. So high HRV equals good, ready to train. Low HRV equals bad, stressed, tired. This is the number your watch uses to give you that body battery score. But here is where the algorithm fails. 3. The biological blind spot. The pizza effect. Your watch sees that your HRV crashed last night. It assumes, oh, he trained too hard yesterday. He is not recovered. Tell him to rest. But the algorithm is blind to your life. It doesn't know that you didn't train hard. It doesn't know that you watched Netflix until midnight and ate a massive pepperoni pizza at 11 p.m. Digestion is stress. When you eat late, your body diverts blood to the stomach. Your heart rate rises. Your HRV tanks. Biologically, you are stressed. But purely from a muscular and aerobic standpoint, you are fine. Your legs are fresh. Your glycogen is loaded. You should go for that run. But because the watch saw digestion stress and interpreted it as training fatigue, it told you to stay on the couch. This is a false negative. 4. The Hardware Flaw The Ghost Runner Cadence Lock But sometimes the lie isn't about biology. It is about physics. Have you ever experienced this? You are running nice and easy. You are breathing through your nose. You feel amazing. You look at your watch, and it says 180 beats per minute. You panic. You think, am I having a heart attack? I don't feel like I'm dying. Relax. You are fine. You have just met the ghost runner. This is a glitch called cadence lock. Your watch uses light photoplethysmography to measure blood flow. But when you run, your arm swings rhythmically, usually around 170 to 180 steps per minute. If the watch is slightly loose, the sensor gets confused. It stops measuring your heart and starts measuring the impact of your feet. It locks onto your cadence. The test. Next time you see a crazy high heart rate, check your cadence graph. If the two lines overlap perfectly, it is a glitch. The fix. Tighten the strap until it leaves a mark or buy a chest strap. 
Optical sensors are convenient, but they are not medical grade. 5. The God metric, lowest heart rate timing. Now, let's talk about the number that frustrates everyone. Sleep score, you wake up, you see. Deep sleep, 15 minutes, low. You feel disappointed, you think, I paid 500 euros for this watch and I sleep like trash. Here's the truth, stop looking at the stages. Deep sleep and REM tracking on wrist wearables is a lottery. It has a 50% error rate, it is a coin flip. No, but there is one number hidden in the charts that is 99% accurate and tells you everything about your recovery. I call it the God metric. It is the timing of your lowest heart rate. Go into your sleep graph. Find the lowest point of your heart rate. Scenario A, your heart rate dropped to its lowest point early, around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Verdict, fantastic. Your body recovered early and spent the rest of the night cruising. You are fresh. Scenario B, your heart rate stayed high all night and only dropped to its lowest point at 6.30 a.m., right before you woke up. Verdict, bad. Your body was fighting all night to recover. Maybe alcohol, maybe heat, maybe stress. You ran out of time. Ignore the deep sleep score. Look at the curve. If it looks like a hammock, low in the middle, run hard. If it looks like a slide, low only at the end. Take it easy. Six, the cyborg. Myth, do you need to sleep with it? There is one more reason your data might be trash. Inconsistency. For the algorithms to work, they need a baseline. They want you to wear the watch 24 seven. But I know many of you hate sleeping with a chunky plastic brick on your wrist. Does that mean you can't use data? Number, if you hate wearing the watch at night, use the morning snapshot protocol. Put the watch on immediately when you wake up. Do a health snapshot, two minutes while lying in bed. Do this every single day. This gives you a manual resting heart rate and HRV reading. It is actually cleaner data because it removes the variables of tossing and turning. You don't need to be a cyborg to have good data. You just need to be consistent for two minutes a day. Seven, the dangerous trap, the super compensation phase. Now let's look at the opposite danger. You, you are in a heavy training block. The data is accurate. And for three days in a row, your HRV is low. Your watch screams, rest, unproductive. Should you listen? Not necessarily. We are digging a hole so your body can build a ladder to climb out of it. This is called super compensation. If you back off every time your watch flashes red, you will never dig the hole deep enough to trigger the massive fitness gains. You will stay in the comfortable middle forever. An algorithm tries to keep you safe. A coach tries to make you dangerous. Sometimes, to get faster, you have to ignore the red light and drive through the fatigue. Eight, the solution, the triangulation protocol. So, do we throw the Garmin in the trash? Number, data is valuable, but it needs a filter. I teach my athletes the triangulation protocol. We never make a decision based on one number. We use three points of data. Point one, the objective data, the watch. Yes, look at the HRV trend. Look at the God metric, timing. Point two, the subjective feeling, the body. Close your eyes. How do the legs feel walking up the stairs? Do you have the itch to run? Or do you dread the idea of putting on shoes? Your brain is the most sophisticated computer on earth. Trust it. Point three, the context, the life. What happened yesterday? Did you drink alcohol? Did you eat pizza? If the HRV is low because of pizza, go run. If the HRV is low because you ran a marathon, stay home. The rule, if two out of three points say, go, we go. Nine, the analog. Backup, 
the orthostatic test. If you really don't trust the watch, here is the ultimate analog test. The orthostatic heart rate test. Lie in bed for two minutes, measure HR. Stand up quickly, wait 15 seconds. Measure HR again. Wait one minute standing. Measure again. The result. If the difference between lying and standing is more than 20 to 25 beats and doesn't come down, your nervous system is fried. This is biology, not an algorithm. Respect it. 10. Beyond the data, the membership. We have talked about HRV today, but how do you set up your data screens for race day? What fields should you look at during a marathon? Pace versus power. In the exclusive membership channel, I share my exact Garmin setup and how to analyze your .fit files like a pro. The link to join is in the description. 11. Closing, you are the captain. I want to leave you with this. Your watch is a dashboard, but you are the captain. Do not let a piece of plastic on your wrist dictate your happiness or your potential. Use the data. Check the God metric but never surrender your intuition to an algorithm. If you are tired of guessing and want a training plan based on your biology and not just generic metrics, you know where to find me. My contact details are in the pinned comment. See you in the next video. Train smart.